Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Lou, and I'm back at y'all with another video, man. Let's get it, man. Gang. I was in LA. You was in LA. You was trying to stay. I was trying to stay. We was in the club. I was trying to fall. You was trying to fall. So you said what's up? Alright y'all, so in today's video, I got another reaction for y'all I'm going to be reacting to. Here is proof that the LA Clippers are 100% cursed. Now if we sit here and really think about the LA Clippers, year after year after year, it's been injury after injury after injury after injury, and they just get no luck. Like, they have the best teams, they have some good coaches. Well, Doc Rivers kind of overrated coach, but you feel what I'm saying? Had some good coaches, and they just couldn't get it done. So, my man's had told me about this video. He told me to look at it, check it out, or whatever the case. It was six years ago, Mike Corzumba, but he was saying that a lot of the stuff that he was saying in here was true and whatnot. So, yeah, we're going to dive into this video. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Turn on post notifications, hold nine yards, man. Comment down below what videos you want me to do. What videos you want to see me react to and just your opinions on the videos overall and yeah man we're gonna get straight to it here and recently the chicago cubs won the world series which is great for cubs fans congratulations but it also means that the los angeles clippers might be the most cursed team in pro sports today yes i'm gonna be honest here when i started Let's talk about this video it. i wanted to do like four or five nba teams that are cursed but i started with the clippers wrote four pages of a script and here we are so today we're going to look at the clippers organization as a whole we're going to look at their team history we're going to start when they were the Buffalo Braves. And I'm going to Buffalo show you proof that the Los Angeles Clippers are cursed. We start in the summer of 1976. In this summer, the Braves fired head coach Jack Ramsey, despite the fact that they had just reached the playoffs for three straight years under Ramsey's command. Because he is a great coach, Ramsey is almost immediately hired by the Portland Trailblazers. The Braves promote Tate's Locks to head coach, who leads the Braves to a 30 and 52 record the next season and miss the playoffs, starting a streak of 15 straight years where the future Los Angeles Clippers franchise will not participate in the NBA playoffs. Nemo. Bro, 15 straight years of no playoffs is insane, bro. I don't care what team you are. The Trailblazers behind Jack Ramsey win the 1977 NBA championship, which is a great sign of things to come. And we are still not done with the 1977 NBA season. Because in October, the Braves managed to trade for 21-year-old Moses Malone for just their first round pick in 1978 and $232,000 cash. Remember, Damn. this was a man who would finish his career as a 12-time All-Star, 3-time MVP, hey, and first battle Moses, of the and Moses. the Braves stole him for next to nothing. So, of course, they celebrated this run of good fortune by playing Moses a grand total of six minutes in his first two games, then trading him to the Houston Rockets for two first round picks because Moses complained about his lack of playing time. Moses went on to average 13.5 points and 13.4 rebounds for the remainder of the season in Houston and won his first MVP just two seasons later. Unsurprisingly, Damn. Tate's Locks was fired as head coach shortly after Moses Malone. Yo, they getting these coaches up out of there. Quickly. And we're just getting started here. In December of the 1977 season, the Clippers proceeded to trade the face of their franchise, Bob McAdoo, a oh, man McAdoo. who had recently won the 1975 MVP, to the Knicks for John Giannale and Cash. McAdoo will go on to average a combined near 25 points per game the next four seasons and finishes his Damn. career in the Hall of Fame. While Giannale never breaks 10 points per game in his career, is off the team the next season and is out of the NBA in That's four bad. years. Fast forward to the 1977 NBA draft where the Braves hold the third pick because they just had a horrible season due to their several stupid okay. moves. With the third okay. pick, the Braves could select Walter Davis, the 1978 Rookie of the Year and a six-time future All-Star, or Bernard King, a future Hall of Fame. Instead, Buffalo trades their number three pick for 28-year-old Swen Maiden, who spent six years with the Braves and never makes the All-Star team. But So we're going to give up our third pick in the draft for a 28-year-old when we can go get Walter Davis or Bernard King. I don't I don't get that, bro. Like there got to be something we don't know about this team, bro. 
gotta be. But still the this is early, bro. We ain't even get to the good one right spot on their roster. Just last year, 20-year-old Adrian Dantley averaged 20.3 points per game and was named the NBA's Rookie of the Year. In order to make sure that their roster is devoid of any young talent, the Braves, of course, trade Dantley to the Pacers for Billy Knight, a man who will spend one season on their team. Meanwhile, Dantley goes on to become a six-time All-Star and a Basketball Hall of Fame, which means if you're counting at home in the span of 12 months, in the span of 12 months, they traded away three Hall of Famers and missed one Hall of Famer in the draft. That's bad, bro. And this is early. The Braves managed to trade away three future Hall of Famers. Stanley in 12 Rose months, bro. And traded away in a year. That could have been a Hall of Famer, Bernard King. As if this wasn't enough, the Braves round out this 12 months oh, span by trading George Johnson, their 1978 first round pick, who would become four-time All-Star Michael Ray Richardson, and their 1979 first round pick, who would become Cliff Robinson, oh, or Nate Archibald. Again, the Braves mortgaged their future for a 29-year-old NBA veteran, and the basketball gods again smite them as tiny terraces ACL before the season starts and misses the whole year with injury. Quick note, at this time, the Buffalo Braves trade owners and end up becoming the San Diego Clippers. Okay. I'm not really going to go into that, but it happened. Which brings us to the start of the 1979 NBA season, where the Clippers will be free. Score, world be free for just their 1984 first round pick. Free is just 25 years old at the time of the trade and proceeds to average close to 30 points a night for the Clippers in the next two years. But Damn. because the Clippers are cursed, this seemingly good trade, of course, comes back to haunt them. Because the 1984 draft will see the Clippers land the number five pick, a pick which sees the Philadelphia 76ers select future MVP and basketball Hall of Famer Charles Barkley. Moving to the summer of 1979, the Clippers decide to target a big name free agent and sign Bill Walton to a massive deal despite the fact that the trade. Blazers let Walton go after he led them to a championship and was named MVP because he had clear, horrible foot problems. For the Clippers, Walton goes on to miss two full seasons in the next five years and only plays in 102 total games. A month later, the Clippers stick... They gotta be cursed, bro. We only four minutes, five minutes into the video. And these niggas missed out on Charles Barkley for Bill Walton. It's like these dudes are trading their draft capital for veterans that are already in the league. I mean, not veterans. Obviously, they're in the league. But veterans that are already getting to that age. And then they're just getting hurt or they're getting injured or they're getting sold. Like, at that, it gets to a point where it's like, bro, forget the... Forget the big name players. Forget the uh, forget the already all stars. Forget the names we already know. Take your draft capital and build it. That's the whole point of rebuilding. Take your draft capital and mold the young people into talent, bro. All these picks that they had, they literally had chances at five, six Hall of Famers this early in the video that they missed out on, like. Stay on a roll and trade their 1986 first round pick for Joe Bryant. Stanford, Shout Joe out Kobe Kobe Dad. An average player at best. Of course, the 1986 pick will become the number one overall pick in the draft. And hey. as if things can't get any worse, the 1981 summer sees Bad another daughter. change in ownership. As notorious racist Donald Sterling buys the team. Now, this might actually be the worst move that the Clippers have made so far. But don't worry, there's a lot more coming. Because in the next six years, the Clippers find themselves with eight first round picks. And you can guess what happened. In 1982, they select Terry Cummings with their second pick, one spot ahead of future Hall of Famer Dominique Wilkins. In 1983, they trade their number four pick to the Lakers for Norm Nixon. The Lakers take Byron Scott, a man who will be a key starter on three championship teams. 1984 sees the Clippers with two first round picks, where they take Lancaster Gordon at eight instead of future All-Star Kevin Willis, and Michael Cage at 14 ahead of future Hall of Famer John Stockton. In eight Michael Cage over John Stockton is crazy. I don't know at the time maybe John Stockton wasn't showing the potential, but come on, bro. Y'all missed out on John Stockton. 85, the Clippers draft third, where they take Benoit Benjamin over future All-Star Xavier McDaniel and future Hall of Famer Chris Miller. And they miss Chris Miller. In the Los Angeles Clippers managed to acquire three first-round picks and select Reggie Williams over future Hall of Famer Scotty Pippen, Joe Wolf over future All-Star Mark Jackson, and Kenny Norman over future All-Star... So Reggie Lewis, Mark Jackson, and who was the other one? Who was the other one? 
and Scottie Pippen. Like, who was the GM of these dudes? Who was the scouts? Like, what were we looking at? Like, oh, that's so bad. I to I just have to say, look, I get it. I get that the NBA draft is tough. I get that teams miss picks all the time. Right. But at this point, with this many missed picks, it certainly seems like something is happening. Some kind of curse is taking form. Nah, for sure. Like, there's no way you miss this many. Like, you've had so many top picks, top three, five top 15 top 20 pick and you're missing scotty you're missing john stockton you're missing charles barkley you're missing xavier mcdaniels kevin willis brad daughtery there's so many names that he listed that they missed bro like it gets to a certain point where it's like enough is enough. But the curse of the Los Angeles Clippers was not just limited to the draft. Because in 1984, the Clippers leave San Diego to go to Los Angeles. Moving okay. to the city where they will forever be known as the Lakers' less successful younger brother. If you consider right. the city of Los Angeles a family where the older brother is an Olympic gold medalist slash astronaut. And the younger brother is like the 40-year-old virgin, only he doesn't get laid. Yeah, that's something <laughs> what? Their number two it's a crazy analogy. Terry Cummings for Marquise Johnson. Now, Cummings did not end up having a Hall of Fame career like Dominique, but he was still 22 years old and fresh off a 23 hey. point per game season with the Clips. But no, the Clippers yeah, are Terry Cummings was in town and end up with Johnson, who we will get to in a minute. Because around the 1983 season, things actually seem to turn around for the Clippers. In September of 1983, the Clippers pick up 22 year old Derek Smith off the waiver. He breaks okay. out as a Clipper and averages 22 points per game as a 23 year old in the 85 season giving the right. Clippers a solid starting three of norm nixon at the point Derek smith at the two and marquise johnson at the three to build upon what followed hey, could only happen solid. to a franchise that is just utterly cursed 11 games into the 1986 season Derek smith blows out his knee is never the same oh and is out gosh. of the league at the age of 29 that summer norm nixon blows out his knee playing softball misses the entire 1987 and 88 seasons with injury then retires after the 19 season. And to cap things off, Marquise Johnson plays 10 games in the 1987 season. Runs headfirst into Benoit Benjamin's stomach and ruptures a disc oh in his neck. God. He never plays a game of NBA basketball again. And going even further, between the 1976 and 1987 seasons, the Clippers managed to miss out on six Hall of Famers in the NBA draft and traded away another three off their roster. So we traded away, so... We traded away three and missed out on six. That's nine total. And then before it was three and I don't know, but it's over like 15 to 20 Hall of Famers that these guys missed already, bro. And not only that, everybody that they get gets injured. This dude blew his knee out. This dude had a ruptured neck disc or whatever. Um... Who, who else got hurt? Who else got uh, Some uh, other people in the video, early in the video, get hurt too? Like, On top of this, they I don't know, man. Like, with their three best players suffering from career-altering or career-ending injuries. Oh, and by the way, remember Bill Walton? Well, after six injury-plagued years with the Clippers, Los Angeles finally took mercy on Walton's mm -mm. soul and sent him to the Boston Celtics before the 1986 Trade season. Him. With Wait. the Celtics, Walton proceeds to play in 96 out of the Celtics' 100 games in the 1986 season. That number includes hey, the playoffs. And is named that? the NBA's sixth man of the year and wins a championship. Somehow avoiding injuries after struggling for years with foot problems as a Clipper, which is rough. But have no fear, Clippers fans. The loss of their three best players means that the Clippers finished the 1988 season with the worst record in the NBA and the number one pick. A chance to finally break the new curse. And wouldn't you know it, the perfect player is available because Danny Manning enters the Danny Manning as a surefire future NBA superstar. He is fresh off a season in which he averaged 25 points per game, was named college basketball mm, player. Part. Of the year huh. and led Kansas to a national championship. Oh, victory. off left. Things are oh, about to turn what around. The? Right. Except now, the Don't curse of the Clippers is in full force. Danny Manning begins his career as a Clipper, meeting everyone's expectations, and then blows out his knee just 26 games. <laughs> Bro, it's not funny, but it's like, bro, there's no way you're telling, you're not telling me that this team's cursed, bro. There's no way. I believe it 100%. This is a W video so far. 26 games in, he blows his knee. He blows his knee out, bro. 
Danny Manning's injury hits the struggling Clippers hard, bro. Like, <laughs> that's insane to me, bro. Like, he's supposed to be the next big thing for this team, and now he's hurt too, just like everybody else in the past, bro. Like, what's what's next, bro? Into his career, he never regains the athleticism that once made him so dominant. At this point, if I'm coming I'm into he... if I'm coming into the draft, bro, I am not, bro. I'm in the press conference. They asked me, so what do you think about the Clippers? They they might have one, two, or three. How do you feel? No, don't send me to the Clippers. That is not an organization I love to be playing for. Everybody that goes to this team is getting injured, bro. They're getting injured. I'm not going there, bro. Hell no. Nah. It's never the same. Piling onto this, the 1989 draft sees the Clippers target Danny Barry, who, fearing for his life, tells the Clippers not to draft him. Instead of taking... They just said, wait, what did he say, bro? Target Danny Barry, who, fearing for his life, tells the Clippers not to draft him. Fearing for his life, they tell the Clippers not to draft him. Fearing for his life. He was told that he didn't want to be, he told them that he didn't want to be drafted. This dude is fearing for it. Yeah, bro, nah. Nah, they got that, bro. They're cursed, bro. He, this dude was fearing for his life, and I don't blame him. Who, of course, threatens to play in Italy, so the Clippers are forced to trade him before the season for Ron Harper and two future non lottery picks. Ron Harper begins the 1990 season averaging 23 points per year. Yo, they said, that nigga said, if y'all draft me, I'm going to play in Italy. They traded that nigga immediately. They wasn't playing no games. Shit, I would have said, hey. Y'all niggas keep me here. I'm going back to Italy, too. Y'all gonna have to... Hey, I'm not playing here, bro. I'm not put my career on the line. His ACL 28 games into the year. You really can't make this up. But somehow, miraculously, the Clippers do... So, Danny Manning gets there. 26 game in, blows his knee out. Ron Harper gets there. 28 days, he tears his ACL. Like... What is this? And break their 15 season playoff drought in the 92 season and again make the playoffs in 1993. But don't hey. worry, the Clippers will mess all of this up. You probably don't need convincing at this point, but let's take a look at the next few drafts anyway. In the 1995 draft, the Clippers have the second pick and take Antonio McDice over Jerry Stackhouse, Rasheed Wallace, and future Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett. They Bad. immediately proceed to trade McDice for garbage to nobody's surprise. In 96, the Clippers oh have the second God. pick and take Lorenzen Wright six picks ahead of Kobe Bryant. Huh. And in the 1999 season, the Clippers again land the number one pick overall. Nigga took the rest of nobodies over Kobe, bro. And select Michael Oluwakandi, a player who is. who is immediately labeled a bust and more than lived up to that label. In this draft, the Clippers passed on college superstars Vince Carter and Paul Pierce. I never even heard of that Michael. I never, I never even heard of that Michael O2, whatever his name was. But if you missed out on Vince, Dirk, Paul Pierce. I don't even I don't even care who the other guy is. One of these dudes should have been drafted sooner. Have to, bro. Have to. Unless they were showing maybe like I said, maybe at the time their potential didn't look how their careers went. And that's okay. Like people miss them. But this is insane. Three Hall of Famers traded away. Eleven Hall of Famers missed in the draft, bro. They just been missing after missing after missing each decade, bro. You can't eleven Hall of Famers. You know what you could do. You know what you could do with eleven Hall of Famers. Just by drafting over the years, eleven Hall of Famers. That is a different type of super team, right there, bro. Different. As Lloyd Vaught shows promise in the 95 season by oh, averaging 17.5 points and 10 rebounds a game. He then okay. proceeds to struggle with the weight of the curse on his back, requires back surgery, and never averages more than 8 points for the rest of the year. Which brings us to the end of the century. And Sports Illustrated puts everyone's thoughts into words by naming the Los Angeles Clippers the worst franchise in pro sports. And Facts. Honest, they gotta be. Three fans with bags over their heads are currently enjoying their best moment as a Clippers fan. As in the last 25 years, the... 
Three Hall of Famers traded away in the last 25 years. 11 Hall of Famers missed in the last 25. And seven careers ruined with injuries in the last 25. And you mean to tell me, or less than 25, I, I think he said 25 though. And you mean to tell me that, that this team isn't cursed? You mean to tell me that um, what does Sports Illustrated say? They're the worst franchise in NBA history? They are. They got to be at this point. With all this information this dude's spilling out, with all the people who've been injured and whatever, woo 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 traded away and missed out. Got to be, bro. Got to be. I don't know who their GM is. They should have got been got rid of that, man. had seven of their best players miss full seasons with injuries that would ruin the rest of their careers. That's sad. And I feel bad for those players because those could have been great. Great players. So let's speed things up. In the 2003 NBA season, the Clippers finished 28 and 54, but end up with the sixth pick, missing out on LeBron, Melo, Wade, and Bosh. But it is the Clippers, and if they managed to sneak into the top five, they probably would have ended up with. Anyway. This season also sees Lamar Odom, one of the Clippers' only good players, leave for free agency. Hey. Which was a very smart move. The Clippers have a chance to make up for the loss of Odom in the 2005 draft, where Danny Granger slides out of the top 10 to everybody's surprise. Instead, the Clips take a man whose name I will not dare try to pronounce. A That's man who bad. scored a grand total of 39 points in two seasons before retiring from the NBA because he's terrible. But still, the Clippers... Nigga put up a total... A total career number of not 39 points. And then he retired because he was ass. And the Clippers drafted this nigga, by the way. The Clippers. They drafted that nigga. And who else did they say was in that draft? Uh, let me go back real quick. Draft, where Danny Granger, Danny Granger. Top to everybody's surprise. Instead, the Clips take a man whose name I will not dare try to Could've got Danny. Who will score a great Good old Danny. 39 points in two seasons before retiring from the NBA because he's terrible. But still, the Clippers find success and make it to the Western Conference semifinals in 2006. They're okay. losing seven games to the Suns after Chauncey. head coach Mike Dunleavy decides to insert Danny Mike a 22-year-old rookie who will be out of the NBA in two years onto Raja Bell for the decide possession of game five. Bill promptly gets open and proceeds to knock down a three-pointer. A nice Damn. symbol of who the Clippers are as a franchise. And we haven't had any career-altering injuries in a few seasons. Oh wait, here they are. In 2007, Sean Livingston suffers the most gruesome injury of any player in basketball oh. history, which is fitting for a team that is completely cursed. Then in 2008, Elton Brand blows out his Achilles, plays in just eight games, and of course Ooh, is never that's the Sean Livingston. That Sean Livingston was crazy. I remember seeing a video of that. I couldn't even imagine, bro. Like, my whole leg, bro. Clippers is killing these niggas. Draft, the Clippers select Eric Gordon, who is hey. a 22-year-old in 2011, averages 22 points per game, and is hyped as the NBA's next top shooting guard. Yep. You may now know him as Eric Gordon, one of the NBA's most average starters, because despite being traded by the Clippers for Chris Paul, he has suffered boy. knee injuries that have derailed his career. In 2009, the Clippers would select Blake Griffin, who Bill Simmons wrote a letter to detailing all of the Clippers' past misfortunes as a way of jokingly warning Blake to be careful. Only a few months after this letter is written in his oh, final shit. preseason game Blake leaves with a stress fracture hey oh man season. and finally in the 2011 Baron season the Davis trade away and Baron first Davis round pick from Mo Williams pass from Mo Williams in an attempt to get that's a crazy of trade the 2011 season sees the Clippers finish with the 8th worst record in the NBA giving them a 2.8% chance to land the first pick with this the basketball gods laugh have the Clippers lottery ball end up with the first pick and cheer as the Cavaliers draft Kyrie Irving and Kyrie. Are going in his career a future Hall of Famer as long as he does not get seriously hurt which because right. he avoided the curse of the Clippers is pretty likely which brings us to the last Clippers miss so many niggas years, which have seen the Clippers take a hey Brewer and one because Paul now buff and the 2016 playoffs which saw the Clippers lose their two best players to injuries in the same game which could only happen that. to a franchise that is cursed a franchise that has never made the West 
Eastern Conference Finals in their entire existence. A franchise that has seen several of their key players go down with career-ending injuries. A franchise that has passed on several Hall of Famers in the draft. I could say more, but I think enough has already been said. The Los Angeles Clippers are cursed, and I don't think that curse is going to be lifted anytime soon. And so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel and you love basketball, maybe um subscribe. I look at basketball history like this video. I look at NBA conspiracies. I do NBA what ifs. Basically, if you love basketball, I think you'll love this channel. And I've loved that. Also, I have to mention that my research was helped tremendously by an article written by Bill Simmons. I'm going to leave the link to that article down below. Alright, y'all. He's just talking, but yeah, bro. This this guy gave me every reason with my course number. Shout out my course number for the uh, information and video or whatnot. But this guy gave me 100% reason to believe why this franchise is cursed. Even to this day, Kawhi Leonard and PG, all they do is stay hurt, bro. We've never seen a season where, I mean, we've seen seasons where the Clippers make it far when they had CP, Blake, and stuff, and then they got hurt. Then Kawhi and Paul George has been on and off hurt, and they just got there like everybody's hurt. Back then, all the draft picks they missed out on, all the careers that got blown away because of injuries and stuff, like, it's bad for them, bro, and I feel bad for the players who, you know what I'm saying, got to go through that, but it clearly seems like it's a curse on them, but, hey, man, it is what it is. If y'all like the video, make sure y'all comment down below, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and we're going to get at y'all boys in the next one, man, deuces.